All right, in this video, I want to talk about the concepts of using get versus set in variables. Now, for most of you, if you have any sort of programming experience whatsoever, or even if you've been playing in Blueprint, this is going to seem really obvious. But there are a few instances where using get and set can be a little tricky. So I do want to make sure that we hit on this. Now, there are two different things to keep in mind when using get or set. If you're doing something like a math operation on a variable, you'll probably have to use them both. And I want to give a quick demo of that. So here, I have a very simple blueprint that has nothing but a billboard in it, so I can see it if I drop into the level. And I'm going to do a few things, some of which are a little dirty, but they will help us out. I'm going to jump over to defaults, and I'm going to uh, set auto receive input to player zero. That just means I don't have to worry about any special input settings, and I can just make stuff happen for testing purposes. I'm going to right click and tap the E key and create a, uh, an input event for when I press uh, the E key on the keyboard. And what are we going to do? Well, let's start off by creating a variable. And I'll call this my int. And let's take its variable type and I'll set that to integer. So this is a number that does not have a decimal point. And what I want to do is make sure that whenever I press the E key, we are going to increment uh, the value of my int. So the first time I press it, it should be 1. The second time I press it, it should be 2 and 3 and 4 and so on and so on. So let me compile my blueprint. And you'll notice that the default value for my int is 0. That's perfect. I don't need to mess with that at all. So to perform math on this, I need to get whatever is already in my int, and I need to add 1 to it. So I'll start by dragging this in like so. And in the first case, the first thing we need to do is say, what is your current value? Well, whenever you're getting that current value, when you're asking for that current value, you need a getter. So we'll bring in a get. Then we need to perform our math operation. So we'll say plus, and we get integer plus integer. And we'll just add 1 to that. Now we need to take whatever the end result of this math equation is, and we need to use that to set a new value for my int. So I'll drag my int back in, and this time I'll choose set. Now notice, set requires an execution input. It's not enough just to feed this data. I need to make sure that it executes as well. So there we go. Now this will not show us any meaningful result in the view. So the very last thing I'm going to do is drag a wire from my little math problem out here into space, and I'll type log. Actually, log is not going to work when you drag off of a wire like that. So let me just right click and open space and type log. And all this is going to do is print some sort of a string to the screen. So I'll make sure those are connected, and I'll drag a wire over. This will automatically create a conversion into a string so that that will appear on the screen. With just that done, let's compile. I need to make sure a copy of this blueprint exists somewhere in my level, and then we can play. And when I hit E, you see oh, already at the top, we've got two, three, four, five, like so. So very quick and easy, we're performing a math operation, and you see that number steadily incrementing. Now that's easy. That's super quick, super simple. But what happens when we need to set a property on an object that exists somehow in our level? Now this can be a little bit more difficult to show, so bear with me. Uh, I'm going to grab an already existing blueprint. Uh, let's grab my character, and I'm going to jump over to uh, the construction script for the character. Now, this character has a mesh, and we can't see that, me that mesh listed in the My Blueprints panel unless we check Show Inherited Variables. So this is a, these are some variables that were set up in the parent class for this object. So we're going to grab that mesh, and we're going to get it, and we want to get some information from that. So we're going to say get material, like so. Now, I should also probably jump over into my components real quick. Let's take that mesh, and let's double check the material applied to it. So we're probably going to have to jump all the way down to the skeletal mesh, and we'll go ahead and close the tutorial window. Let's go over to uh, the materials in mesh details. We'll double click that. And we have template master, and we notice that that has a vector parameter called diffuse color. Well, that's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to see. I just wanted to know what the name of that uh, parameter was, if there was such a thing. Now, because that has a parameter, we can make a dynamic version of that material, and we can do some changes to it. So for instance, uh, let's right click, and I'll say, uh, actually, it's create. Uh, create dynamic material instance. And we need to make sure that gets connected to the construction script. 
and we're going to feed out the result of get material into that. Now, I am going to store that dynamic material instance into a variable. I'm going to do this through the shortcut method of just right clicking and choosing promote to variable. And I'll call this uh, DMI, so that's short for dynamic material instance, so I can talk to that later. The last thing I need to do is set that, uh, that proper, or summary, set that material onto the mesh. Now, this is where things get a little interesting. I am setting a property on that mesh but I am not changing which mesh is stored. So what I want, it may sound like at first, because you're setting the material, that you may want to use a setter, but that's not the case. What we're doing is we're going to get the mesh, because we're just kind of talking to some part of the mesh, and then we are going to set the material from there. Again, you might be thinking like, well, why aren't we using a setter? A setter would be used if we wanted to change out to a different mesh altogether, which is not what we want to do. So we'll go ahead and connect that. And then I can take my return value from dynamic material instance and plug it in like so. So there we go. So now we have a dynamic version of that material assigned to our character. Now that's not going to do anything particularly fancy until we tell it to. So here in sort of a blank area of the event graph, uh, I'm going to do a couple of things. Again, let's do something a little bit, uh, a little bit hacky. We're going to tell this to automatically listen for inputs, which we probably don't have to do. Uh, but I'll do it anyway. So we'll automatically listen for uh, input from player 0 and go jump back to the graph. So here in just a random blank area, let's pick another letter of the alphabet on the keyboard. We'll say F. And we can now talk to that dynamic material instance variable. And here's the thing. You might be, okay, let's say we want to assign a different color to that. Uh, again, because you are setting something, in this case setting color, you may be tempted to use a setter, but that's not what we want. We want to get the material and then set some property inside of it. So now we can say uh, set vector parameter, and it's going to ask what that parameter name. It should be diffuse color, but I can double check real quick. Yes, diffuse color, all one word. So we'll just type that in, diffuse color, like so. Plug this in, and then to make a random color, a really fast way to do that would be to uh, choose, uh, so we're kind of working backwards. We'll drag a wire back and choose make linear color, and then we can drag backwards from here and say random, and we'll say random float in range, and our range is going to be 0 to 1, and we just copy that and paste it and paste again and we'll just plug those into G and B. There's another way to do this with vectors, but we're not going to worry about that right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and compile. Notice I hard-coded alpha to 1. I didn't really need to do that, but it makes me feel better. So now with that out of the way, let's hit play. And now if I tap the F key, we get a random color every time we hit the button. Uh, it's because we're doing uh, just a really quick random check, and we are assigning a new value to the color property or the, uh, the vector parameter, but we did not do that with a setter. The only reason we would use a setter would be if we wanted to, uh, in this case, we wanted to change out to an entirely separate material, or in the case of the construction script, if we wanted to change out to an entirely different mesh. So that is going to wrap up this quick video over the difference between getting and setting. Thank you very much.